All right, folks, here's the finished sketch of uh, some redwood trees in a redwood forest. So I'm painting this on location in the forest, which I've tried in the past uh, with watercolors. I was doing the sketches a little bit bigger in the past, and uh, it was very challenging. I had a lot of failed, a uh, few failed sketches. So this was my first one on a smaller format. This is a five by seven. And uh, yeah, it was, I was up for the challenge. I was like, I'm gonna try it again. I'm not gonna give up, just keep going. So I'm starting out with uh, transparent red oxide. It's one of my favorite um, colors to use for these trees and stuff. But I'm, I also have a little bit of ultramarine blue in there just to gray it down a bit. So a very simple mixture. And I'm trying to start off here with the lightest lights of the trees in the forest. So that's my main focus here. So that's what I'm working towards. So I'm just trying to fill in the main tree shapes kind of the silhouettes of the trees and behind the trees is just mostly greenery. So I'll be filling that here in in a few minutes. But this first stage is just, you know, basically focusing on lightest lights. And uh, what I'm putting on now, that kind of gray, dark gray mixture, it's very tough because these trees, um, in particular, the big tree there that I'm painting uh, has been in many fi fires. So the bark is actually black and gray in some areas. So I was trying to show that a little bit, but uh, I can't get it too dark because that area is actually in light. So it's very tricky. And the, the light in this in this forest, I mean, it moves so quickly. If you spend more than uh, 10, 20 minutes on a sketch, and of course I do, I spend more than that on this sketch, but you know, anytime you spend more than that on a sketch in this forest is like, it's just super hard. The light's gonna be completely gone. So you have to really make sure you capture uh, basically the areas in light on the tree first, because those are gonna be the things that go. You'll be able to capture the shadows because most of the forest is already in shadow. So, I try to go with the lights first, whether I'm painting in oils or watercolor, I try to get the light areas first because those are gonna be moving. The shadows are easy because the whole forest is gonna be in complete shadow at the end, so you can just use that information to paint the shadows, but once the light's gone, it's hard to find a tree again that's actually in light. So, so far I have kind of the lightest lights, some mid-tones in there. You can see the warmer mid-tones there that I have in, and now I'm working on shadows or, you know, the reflected light in the shadows on the ground, on the trees. You know, just trying to build up, slowly build up some values here for the most part. I know, I know that, you know, something that I'm, I'm thinking while I'm doing this, I know that the trees are going to be the darkest things uh, compared, you know, to the ground, compared to the greenery. The trees are going to be something that catches the least amount of light, especially in the shadow areas. But there is going to be some, you know, reflected light bouncing around, warm reflected light, things like that. So now I'm hitting the background greenery and I really love the greens in this forest man it's just amazing the green against the uh, transparent red red oxide uh, of the of the trees it's just a beautiful harmony and uh, it's 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 really awesome to be able to capture that So for my greens, this green uh, is kind of like Viridian with uh, cadmium yellow, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre, and also some transparent red oxide. So I'm trying to keep that harmony going, harmonizing everything for the most part. So really getting in some warm greens in there. And then in the shadows, the greens get much cooler. They'll have more blue in it, more phthalo blue, ultramarine, Viridian, things like that. So now I have the whole painting completely blocked in, basically. 
Now I'm just using the brush, a damp brush, trying to lighten up some areas. And now I'm moving into a smaller round brush. This is a uh, number three round brush, I believe, synthetic hair. And now I'm trying to move to the darkest darks. And I do this sometimes because I want to know how dark I'm going to go. So I find the darkest area that's not going to really change. I know that it's going to stay dark. And I try to put that in just to give me an idea. So try to give me an idea of, of where the painting's going to be going. Try to key in my values a little bit. So now I have the lightest light. I have some mid-tones in there. And this is the darkest dark that I'm putting in for the most part. So now you can see I have a long way to go for values. You know, I have a lot of other areas to darken down to really get the kind of spotlight effect, dappled light effect in the forest. And uh, definitely take notice that the darkest darks that I put in there are very warm. So that's something that I notice in the forest is the darkest darks tend to be, you know, when something is like basically black, when you think it looks black, um, and I'm not talking about black like on the tree where it was burnt, uh, that you, usually that actually has a cooler black, like has more blue and blue grays in it. But when you see something, you know, really dark, like a black, like underneath a rock, a shadow underneath a rock, that's not getting any light, it's normally very warm. You know, that's that's a general rule. Anyway. Uh, so there are exceptions to that. You know, if you're in Alaska painting a glacier, uh, the darkest darks usually just get really, really blue. And you're not really going to see a lot of warm colors in a glacier or anything like that. But that's completely different than this. And in the forest, these dark, really dark darks, uh, you know, different than the shadows and different than the reflected light. I'm talking about the dark accents. Those are going to be, you know, very warm. So basically, you know, black with transparent red oxide, maybe a touch of ultramarine blue. You don't even need black. You could just do ultramarine blue with transparent red oxide and just bend it a little more toward the warm color, and uh, that'll get you a really warm uh, color. So this is, this is the part I really struggled on is getting this light to look correct on this tree because there was some bark there's obviously bark all over the tree and then there was some very dark shadows in the in that spotlight area but I realized when I put these and they're very thin lines so I realized when I put them in very dark it just doesn't look right so I had to lighten those up and now I'm, I'm just playing around with them trying to simplify what I'm seeing but still kind of show the complexity of the trees and of the bark and things, try to get that texture to come across. And I, you know, I, I may have added a little too, too many details in the final painting, but, uh, you know, it's something to learn from. You know, this, like I said, this was one of my first sketches in watercolor in the forest this small. And I had a lot of other failed ones before this, so I'm, I'm learning. You know, I'm, at this point, I'm just focused on capturing what I can and just learning. So here I'm taking off some pigment there with just a damp brush and trying to blend down to the lights. You know, I don't want a harsh line from the light to the to these reflected lights. You know, it's more of a dappled light spotlight effect in this when you see things in the forest. There's usually very little harsh, sharp edges uh, when it comes to shadows and things. It's usually all very soft. So I'm trying to keep that in mind here. And now that I've, I've worked on the... Uh, now that I've worked on the trees, I'm going to let those dry. So now I'm going to, I'm hitting the uh, greenery. And I'm struggling at this point, trying to figure out how to simplify this. There's so many little things going on in this forest. 
uh, so many little branches and baby trees growing and sticks and twigs and leaves and there's all kinds of little things everywhere so you see here I get a little carried away with trying to show these little plants and things growing um, and I, I think here in a minute I'm gonna start realizing that okay I need to focus on just larger strokes and really simplify so here I'm still dotting in little shapes and it's just kind of ridiculous um, but like I said I mean it's um, I'm, this is a whole learning experience and I hope you guys are able to learn something from my mistakes I mean that's that's huge I think um, you know so here we go this is where I start focusing on okay some larger greenery and sorry about that glare there but that's just what happens when you're out on location man you get a little bit of glare but now I'm, I'm adding in some more dark shadow areas to the greenery in the background and this is really gonna bring out the light areas so I'm trying to vary my strokes a little bit add some different shapes and texture variety I'm trying to show the complexity of the forest without actually painting all of that complexity like I was earlier is kind of ridiculous so as it's getting to the edges of the of the painting there I try to darken it really darken down give this vignetting effect and now the tree has dried pretty much now I'm hitting it with the very darkest dark so earlier it was you know just a warm type of uh, dark shadow now I'm going in with uh, darkening it again which may have been overkill I probably didn't need to do it but um, you know at this point I wasn't really used to watercolors drying lighter drying so much lighter and uh, you know this forest is tough man but uh, I think the sketch did come out pretty well in the end so I'm not too bummed out about it and really with with the light being so bright on that tree really showing some darker shadows like I did really gives enhances that light effect showing how bright that light actually is so that's really what I'm going for I'm trying to capture you know the reason I paint this scene is because obviously I love being in the forest I love the redwoods and such but I'm also trying to capture the color harmonies and the light effect that's my main thing like how does it feel to be in this forest what am I feeling what kind of colors are out there and uh, how is how is the light hitting these trees and how, how are the shadows look in comparison so I'm trying to suggest some uh, bark and, and texture on the trees there, some shadowy textures. And just adding some darker greenery in here. You know, just slowly working these values. So I started at the very lights, went into the, the mid-tones, then went with like the reflected lights, shadows, and then darkest darks. That's kind of how I work. That's how I try to work these paintings. It doesn't always go that well in that order. You know, sometimes I have to go back over things, you know, darken down some mid-tone areas. But for the most part, it's what I try to do. And then I'm adding in some darker leaf shapes here, just trying to show some depth overlapping uh, areas here uh, in the trees because there's leaves and everything all around in the forest. So... And there's the finished sketch. Be sure to check out my other tutorial videos for drawing and painting. Also, subscribe to see future episodes. Peace.